So what we can understand now about this um, situation dealing with friction, I'm going to try to illustrate to you using a slightly different example. Okay, I'm going to use a different example here to illustrate with you. So say this is a rough surface and we have um, like a block that's resting on this rough surface. Okay. The forces acting on this block are its weight and the reaction force. Okay. So you can say the weight and the reaction force. It's a different question from this. I'm just, I'm just giving a scenario here. Now, if you have no force pulling, like for example, if I draw here, P, okay. If it's a rough surface, if P is equal to zero, if this force is equal to zero, then a rough surface will have friction, okay? But if P equals to zero, F equals zero. If nothing's trying to move the object, there will be no frictional force acting, okay? If the force pulling is equal to one, then the frictional force will become one as well because it's going to oppose the motion, right? It will never exceed that. It will always be the same as that. If this increases to two, this increases to 2. If this increases to 2.5, this increases to 2.5. The frictional force will always match the force pulling the object. Always. Right? And if this becomes 10, this will become 10 if it's able to. Now, the frictional force has a limit to which it can reach depending on any given situation. Okay, the frictional force has a maximum value. We, we, we call it F max. And that's determined by two things. One of them is the roughness of the surface, which is given by the coefficient of friction, which is given by the, the symbol mu. And the second thing that determines how big the frictional force can reach, its maximum value, is the magnitude of the um, reaction force between the surfaces. Okay, so mu r. This formula tells us the maximum value of friction in any given situation. Okay, now what we have to understand is that when something is in equilibrium, if it's in equilibrium, if it's not going to move, right, what's going to happen is we know that the pulling force must be less than or equal to F max. Because supposing F max here is 10. Supposing this is F max. Supposing that this in this particular situation is the highest that it can ever reach. Okay, so supposing this 10 is F max. This will become 10. But now, if this becomes 11, so, so if this pulling force is 10, then F max will reach, it will become 10, it can equal 10. But if this becomes 11, then this can't go over 10. It's going to stay as 10. If this becomes 15, this can't go over 10. It's going to become, it's going to stay 10. So there will be a resultant force. Okay, then you'll say P minus F is going to be, for example, for the last situation, 5. Okay, times the acceleration. So it will accelerate. It will start accelerating. Okay, there will be a resultant force. Okay, so that's why we have to, um, that's what we have to understand. Resultant force will be caused when the pulling force is greater than F max. So if we want this in this particular situation for the object to remain in equilibrium, then the, the force pulling it can never ever exceed F max. Okay, so that's a bit of background that will hopefully help us to understand what to do in you know this question. Okay, so basically, we got to think about, first of all, resolving these forces um, horizontally and vertically. So let's talk about vertically first. We have the upward force and the downward forces are equal. Now, what we have to think about is the resolving of these forces in those directions. Okay, so I'm going to resolve this force, P, in the vertical direction, it's going to have a component like this, okay, and in the horizontal direction, it's going to have a component like this. Now, what we should understand, very important for us to understand, is that 
when you're resolving a force in the direction or through the angle given, the angle given here is alpha. Okay, when we drew this. Uh, this is going to become P times, if you go into the angle, you use cosine at, cosine. Because as we can see here, this is like, if you, if you draw a right angle triangle like here, this would be like the adjacent side. Okay, this would be like the adjacent side. And this side would be like the opposite side, parallel to the opposite side. So you're going to go away from the angle, you use sine. Going away from the angle, not into the angle, you use sine. So this, this component will be P times sine alpha. So vertically we have upward forces is the reaction force, and that's equal to W plus P times sine alpha. And horizontally, we have P cosine alpha, P cosine alpha, okay, is equal to F, okay, that's horizontally, okay, that's the frictional force, okay. So now, um, what we can do here is, um, first of all, now let's go back to what we wrote earlier with the sine tan alpha. Okay, we know tan alpha equals 4 over 3, right? So if we were to think about this, we want to make an, we, we don't want to find the angle alpha because it's going to be something in decimals and it'll make a bit of hassle for us. So when you've got something like this, you should understand that what they intend for us to do is the following. Okay, it makes it much simpler to, to do it in this way. So I'm going to draw a triangle. Okay, so I draw a triangle and a right angle triangle. Okay, so we have a right angle triangle. Okay, this is the right angle. I'm going to call this angle alpha. Now I know the tangent of alpha is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, so that's 4 over 3. So this side is going to become 5 by Pythagoras, 3, 4, 5. So what that means is that the sine of alpha is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 4 over 5. And the cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. Okay, so we can use those in these problems here. Now, what we want to understand here now is that um, we're going to find what f max is to get the highest possible value, right? Um, we know that for this, for this to be in equilibrium, p cosine alpha has to be less than or equal to f max. So let me write it like that as well. For this to be in equilibrium, f p cosine alpha is must be less than or equal to f max. It must be less than or equal to f max for this to be in equilibrium. The force horizontally here must be less than or equal to the, to the frictional force. Otherwise, if it's greater than that frictional force, if this component here is greater than that frictional force, then what's going to happen is the object will not remain in equilibrium. And we want to show that the part, given that the particle doesn't move, that means it has to stay in equilibrium. So now we just worked out that cosine alpha is three fifths. So we can say P times three fifths is less than or equal to F max. Now we know that F max is equal to mu R, as I mentioned. So we know mu is a quarter, and we know R, okay, is W plus P times sine alpha. Okay, so we can say that F max is equal to a quarter times W plus, now sine alpha, as we mentioned before, is four fifths. So it's going to be four fifths P. So you're going to have F max is a quarter times W plus four over five times P, right? So hopefully when we rearrange this, we will get this inequality. Okay, so let's have a look. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to multiply both sides by 20. Why? Because I've got 5 here and I've got 4 here. So that will cancel out. So 20 times this, if I multiply this side by 20, and I multiply this side by 20, this will cancel with this, giving me 4. So I'll have 4 times P times 3, which is... 12p is less than or equal to, if I do the same thing here, this is going to become 5, 
and then I'll have 5 times W, which is 5W, and 5 times 4 fifths P, which is 4P. The 5s will cancel out. And then I can rearrange this, 12P minus 4P. Now, when they say show that something, and they gave you the actual, uh, you know, value that you have to find, you have to be very, very careful to show all your steps, you know, clearly. So that gives me um, 12P minus 4P, which is 8P, is less than or equal to 5W. Therefore, we can say P is less than or equal to 5W over 8. Okay, and that's what we had to show. Simple as that. Okay, so hopefully that was clear, understood that properly. And, um, and that concludes this question from this paper. This, um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist. It'll be linked at the end of the video over here. Other questions from um, this topic of statics in M1 can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the video that will appear in this region will tell you or show you how to use my channel in a way that will you know, help you find what you're looking for quickly. Thank you for watching and see you soon.